let's talk a little bit more about the rebuilding process after these earthquakes. Mohammed Masood Rafi joins me now from Karachi in Pakistan. He's a professor in the Department of Earthquake Engineering at the University of Engineering and Technology. Uh, professor, thanks so much uh, for giving us your time here on TRT World. Earlier, we actually saw a, a story about the amount of rubble that needs to be removed before a building can start. And the United Nations Development Program says these quakes have generated up to 210 million tons of rubble. That's almost an unimaginable uh, amount. Where do you even uh, begin to, to start with the clearing process? Where does it all go? Well, in my opinion, and I'm not saying that this is not there, in my opinion, there has to be a debris management plan in the first step, because there are two type of uh, identification of uh, activities that may be needed in this management plan. First is the possibility or the investigation or exploration of a possibility of recycling some of this debris and <clears throat> waste so that they can be used in the reconstruction activities. And second is, otherwise, if this is not possible and anything that, that cannot be recycled, then uh, landfill sites have to be identified because unless this is cleared up, this, it is not possible to start any rebuilding and reconstruction activities. So the management plan will certainly require these two elements, the identification of any recycling possibility and or landfill sites. And the Turkish government wants to actually start rebuilding in just a few weeks in, in March because uh, the plan is to have people homed within a year and to rebuild within a year. Do you think uh, this is a viable and safe time period because they are working against the clock now? Well, I can't really comment on that because this all is dependent on how good is the management plan and how organized things are. Anything is possible otherwise, because we can understand that as the time will pass on, uh, people, the, especially the affectees, the, the frustration will start building among them because they are, they are homeless, they are out of job, no money, no uh, um, the normal life activities. So this frustration will start increasing among people. So and this is something visible to provide them normality in life as early as possible. Yeah, that normality is so important, especially for the young ones trying to cope with the trauma of losing their homes. What do you think some of the long-term impacts of these quakes will be, also given that they took place in an area that is very prone to earthquakes? Well, irrespective of whether the area is prone to earthquake or not, this scale of damage is really difficult for people to... Uh, comprehend and to live with. So it's going to take a long time for them uh, psychologically to come out of the trauma that they have been through due to the due, due to the uh, different events that took place. This could be uh, damage or collapse of a house or injuries that were inflicted to the people, and especially the people who were trapped in the in the rubble. It's going to take a, some time for them to come out uh, of this uh, trauma. Perhaps there may be need of providing some special training to the to the people, paradigmic uh, and other uh, doctors, so that they can treat these people, the injured people and the traumatic people, according to their needs. And Professor, in the work that you've done, have you ever seen damage quite to the extent of what we've seen after these two earthquakes and then the earthquake that we had again on Monday? Well, we have experience of 2005 Kashmir earthquake in Pakistan. So I'm not uh, comparing the level of damage to this place or to the, uh, to the, to the uh, areas which were affected by the 2005 Kashmir earthquake. So uh, on, the, on a qualitative scale, we have been through this kind of situation back in 2005 when there was an earthquake in Kashmir. <clears throat> Okay, Professor Mohammed Masood Rafi, appreciate your expertise. Thank you so much for speaking to us. You're welcome.